Don, Jan Barriuso from Coplas, because <laughs> uh, after our last session in the Pool Academy, he said, Dominic, what do I do with my Friday morning? You know, it's my, my life feels so empty. And yeah. that's why we promised we will be back. Okay, yeah. we are back. It's Thursday yeah. today, but that's okay, still yeah, okay. I think We're that's back. acceptable. We're but back. I, we we you missed again. you too, right? Absolutely. We, we became, you know, in the beginning when we did the pool academy, we saw it was a little bit of pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after the first one, we started to love it and yeah. we couldn't stop. So that's why we do the booster. We are back. Yes. Great Good. to have you back. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Here? Yeah. Good. It's working. What's the yes. agenda? So... Okay. Yes. So we'll do a, a very quick introduction on how we uh, how we started into the year. Then we will tell you about the new AFM DIN grade. Now this is particularly important for our German customers, but nevertheless we wanted to uh, talk quickly about this here with you as well. Also some new findings about backwashing, thanks to our new lab in Scotland that we want to share with you. And one thing we did discuss in session number seven, we want to really discuss is corrosion because it's that important. Yes. And then followed by advanced oxidation. This is uh, Florent's baby, really. He will take us through that. And then we have some new case studies and experiences around the world. Which yeah. is all our DNA. And finally, Q&A. And that works always. Always the same. You can use the chat. You can uh, write your questions during the, the, the whole presentation. And we will go through them at the end of the presentation. Exactly. So, uh, how was our year? Yes. So, we had a great year. We uh, ended up uh, producing 26,000 tons of filter media this year, which was almost 30% more than the year before. It was all hands on deck. Huh? It was a busy year. Yes. And, uh, you know, here you see Johnny, our dear production manager in Switzerland. You know, and you have to, to understand, you know, the first three months of the year, Scotland was closed. So all the load was on the Swiss uh, production. And it was quite heavy, you know, yeah. they, the guys had to work uh, six days uh, a week, 12 yeah. hours. Yeah. That was a little bit bad, and this is how Johnny looked in March. <laughs> Three months later, huh? what, what he does it mean? To I'm us. in deep shit. Yeah, he came to us, <laughs> and I think the picture says it all. They huh? needed yeah. some help. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. And then we said, okay, don't panic. All of us will come and help you two, three days per day. And uh, this is how it looks like. huh? So, by the way, if you don't recognize that's <laughs> Philip, that's me on yeah. the disturbed uh, yeah. cover, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's me. And it felt, you know, after the first day working in the production, I couldn't move anymore. You know, I had muscle but this muscle You were sore. So I sore. was sore. I did not know how to come into bed and especially Sweaty, not out of the bed. Stinky. Yeah. Right? But, so... but you felt good. You felt tired. You felt <laughs> like, like a man. man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was good. And uh, of course, also Florent and uh, Mike and uh, here Jochen. Yeah. Uh, we said, okay, we have one mission and we have one team. And we made a short video to explain you how that works. One team, one mission. One, one team, one was, mission. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, it was great. And to be honest, it was a really big experience for us. We yeah. learned so much about the production. And uh, Johnny came to us, you know, in, in March and said, we have to reinvest another three million. We have to, to, to lock down the production for three months, what we are actually are doing. And I think without this experience, we would have never agreed again to this investment. But we do this and it will become, yeah. product will become even yeah. better. We yeah. will become more efficient. But that's, that's internal. It was a very good experience, and I hope we'll do that again. 
Philip and me already looking for retirement and we will work only in the production. In the factory, yeah. exactly. Huh? Okay, but now Booster. Uh, we move to uh, a new product that we are launching. It's the AFMNG DIN grade, so 0.7 to 1.2. So what is it? It's a, a grade that meets the requirements of this DIN norm, according to the DIN 1963. Yeah. The huh? grade is 0.7 to 1.2. It's uh, using the same activation, so NG activation mm -hmm. with the hydrophobic surface. And we will supply this product in 25 kilo bags as well as big bag of one ton. Yeah, so only for commercial boots. Why did we do it? Because of our dear German friends. You know, we are working on this uh, DIN certification for, sure. for glass media years, yeah. and especially for AFM for many, many years. And it's a long process. It's very, very slow. I don't want to go into the details. And we were discussing uh, our grade 1.4.8 is much better. Uh, no, we are always using our 0.7, 1.2 inch sand. So finally we gave up, Philip, and we said, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. And we have done it. And yeah. to be honest, it's not that bad. Yeah. So when you say not that bad, let's, uh, let's take a look at filtration efficiency. Uh, what we see here uh, is on this table, you see the, uh, the horizontal axis, which is the particle the particle size that we are removing two uh, five exactly et and on the vertical you see the percentage of uh, of the particles and as always we draw a line at 95 percent and you can see that uh, with uh, the afm din we are removing five micron particles yeah right? that's what you see here huh? that's mm -hmm. the afm -D. yes afm one would be here on one that's five and if you compare this with sand, this is sand 0.4.8, which is the finest sand we get here. Uh, it's far above, and the yellow line is the Dean sand. You know, it's a huge difference. Huh? Yes, huge difference. Yeah. So it's not one micron, but it's, it's yeah. five microns. Pretty which is, good. Which is a big difference. So we, we would recommend to go with grade one, yeah. grade two, the, yeah. the mix that we always yeah. recommend. But if the Germans want it, they can have this. And it will perform a lot better than yeah. sand. And um, we also think this is a product we can use in some wastewater treatment applications yeah. as well. Huh? Yeah, because yeah. that's that's the really only advantage. You know, the loading capacity of this DIN is more or less Bigger. double. Yeah. So yeah. in wastewater, you can really great uses. Do you really need this in pools, especially in indoor pools? No. No. But... Uh -uh. Uh, if the German wants it, they can have it. Can and have what it. they fill in, uh, finally, I don't care. You know, yeah. we want to have this DIN certification, yeah. Yeah. which should be in place in six months. Yeah. So as always, what's important is backwash velocity and proper bed expansion. And that's what we see here on these curves. You know, you do need about a minimum of 50 meters per hour backwash velocity to expand uh, uh, the DIN AFM by at least 15%. Yeah, huh? 55 here to yeah. expand 15%. Yeah. And you see here, Dean Sand, you need 60 meters. You need 60 meters. And that's exactly why in the Dean, they specify backwash velocity must be 60 meters per mm -hmm. hour. So if you operate this Dean Sand or this AFM Dean with 60 meters per hour, you will have a good backwash. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But yeah. With, with 30, you're, you're lost. Yeah. You're lost. Don't do it. Never less than 50. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So this shows you uh, the comparison with our traditional AFMNG grade one. So you see that we have this 15% bed expansion at 30 meters per hour with the NG grade one, which uh, will work, but we still recommend to have a minimum 40 to 50 meters per hour. And so this here, the green line is not the grade one. That's 50% 50, grade 50. one, yeah. 50 grade two, both yeah. of them NG. Mm -hmm. And we see that's with... 40 meters and more, you have a really good bed expansion. Mm. This, by the way, this is sand, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.8, you know, just to compare. Yeah. And that's maybe for our British friend, you know, from my friends from the Putin committee, you see even this very fine sand, I think you even, even do not have this, it's 30 meters per hour. Uh, it's, it's not a great expansion. No. Uh, it's not uh -huh. a great expansion. And yeah. I, I completely disagree with your 30 meters per hour, but we are coming to that a bit later mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not just about expanding the bed, it's also about the efficiency yes. of the backwash, which means how much and how quickly are we able to remove the particles that we captured. So far, we told you, look at the bed expansion, 15% minimum, better 25 or higher. Yep. 
But the really the good thing to measure it is that you make a backwash and you have a turbidity meter on the outlet of your filter and you measure the turbidity yes. because then you really see what comes out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's the gray line that we're seeing. That's the turbidity. So we start the backwash process, takes a little bit of time for it to reach the turbidity meter, but then you can see how quickly how the turbidity, and here it turbidity drops, drops right? So within three, four minutes, we are close to zero, huh? And the yellow line is just the opposite. So this is the turbidity reduction and this is the backwash efficiency. This is how you can measure really backwash efficiency. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Uh, yeah. So this now is comparing DIN sand backwash efficiency or uh, AFM DIN with AFM with uh, DIN sand. So blue uh, here, yeah. it should be green. Huh? Should be green, uh, yes. Yeah, that's AFM, about four minutes. And here you see DIN sand takes longer. Much longer. Much longer, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're right, much longer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so did you, you, did you get this? Our recommendation again would be to stay, you know, in the rest of the world, 50-50 or 60-40, grade one, grade two, maybe grade three, if you have laterals. That would be our recommendation. But if the Germans want DIN, they can have DIN, right? Mm -hmm. Next subject, Scottish factory. Good. Yeah, so R &D. Scottish factory, we have this new r and center that we, uh, we will show you. So we had one before, but we just made it a lot better. It looks like this, huh? Um, with turbidity and, and particle counters. Yeah, we took it from good to great, huh? Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. So good. why are we doing it? When can, yeah. What can we test? Yeah, really, the, the, the main reasons why we did this is because it allows us to test different types of filtration media quickly, efficiently in a one-to-one -one comparison at the same time. Huh? And that's the, the graph that we have on the lower left there. You can make that bigger. Yeah. yeah. So you see here the five different columns. We test here TTS, temperature, pH, redox, turbidity, uh, pressure. pressure. We have two particle counters on the inlet and the outlet. We have again on the outlet turbidity and pressure. And we also have turbidity meter on the backwash line. This yep. be how we can measure uh, uh, backwash efficiency that we could not do before. You know, it's um, it's an investment, you know, it costs a little bit of money, but... Uh, Thanks to this, we learned a lot of new We things. learned a lot, yeah, yeah. Um, and we can also improve our products yeah. and develop new products Absolutely. like the Dean grade. Yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. it was a good excuse to invest our money in the R&D center instead of in our wives, you know, I think they... Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> performance is better. Yeah. <laughs> the learnings are better. Okay, that was a little bit of a nasty one. Uh, <laughs> so something we wanted to share with you is our new findings about backwashing. Yeah. So, so we used our new lab. Uh, we tested different media. Um, so you will see this on the next slide. Uh, but mm -hmm. can you quickly look how far we have advanced? You know, with the just about the timing, I think we are pretty good. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're okay. Fine. Yes. We're Continue. Fine. So really we good. tested the sand, the 0.4 to 1.2. We tested the sand din, 0.7 to 1.2, uh, as well as, of course, our AFMNG grade one, the new AFMNG din, and then another glass, which is a French glass, uh, 0.7 to 1.3. So first thing we uh, checked was the bed expansion. Uh, we wanted to compare this media at 50 meters per hour. And um, what we see here is on the left side, you have the sand, 0.4 to 1.2. You know, at 50 meters per hour, very good bed expansion, 25%. This will work on the long run. It's, oh, uh, sorry, that's a mistake. This is sand, 0.4 to 0 0.8. Also, that's why I, I asked you. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, sorry, that was wrong. So, so that was to, to check if you're with, uh, if, if I'm... Yeah, this yeah. is normal sand, 0.4 to 0.8. That was a mistake. Then okay. we have the Dean sand. So the Dean sand, we have here a bed expansion of 8%. So that shows you that uh, it's at 50 meters per hour. It's not really working. It's it's, mm. it's too low. And, yeah. and that's why you need this 60 meters yes. per hour, yeah. according this, to the Dean. This yeah. is why they specify yeah, it sure. in the yeah. Dean. And you yeah. see it, it's not really expanding really yeah. well. Yeah. The French glass uh, in the middle really completely failed. Uh, 50 meters per hour, you cannot backwash this filter. Bed expansion, only yeah. 5%. What we see here, it moves a little bit, but it's not the full band, you know, yeah. it's... It's not doing a lot. And yeah, this is yeah. 50 meters per hour. And yeah. I doubt that you have too many filters that are running in backwashing yeah. in 
France with this. I'm not really proud of my country on this one. Oh, <laughs> you can, you know, it's a great country, <laughs> okay. uh, great women, okay. good food. Yeah. Well, football, you're less good than Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> by the way, also <laughs> Italy. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> just for one time. Yeah, but we were yeah, very yeah. happy, okay, very proud. Of it. I mean, I apologize for that, but yeah. <laughs> We were quite proud. So great expansion yeah. on uh, on the great yes. one. Yes, huh? yeah, great one, forty really percent, yeah. really good. Uh, and on the right side, you see the new AFMNG DIN. Uh, so fifty meters per hour, you get this expansion of thirteen percent. So also, that's why it's really the minimum. Yeah, you mm. also see this. Huh? This is after back as a in back washing. You know, mm. this bad to this bad yeah. to this yeah. bad. To yeah. this bad, to to this. Huh? Yeah. So that was just about bad expansion. We do not come now again with performance. You find this all in the IFTS mm -hmm. data, but also that proves you know that you need a really backwash velocity. It's yeah. not thirty meters. Putac in so, the UK. It's something not something else we see here is we have a similar grade size. So if you take the Sandin, the French glass, and the new NG DIN. Uh, more or less the same uh, grade size, but completely different bed expansions. Yeah, mm. it's nearly double with AFM. Yeah. Yeah. And this has to do something with the grain form. Yeah. It's not just the size, it's also the grain form, which is important. So this shows the first backwash of fresh media ever, right? We see on the left side AFM DIN backwashed at 50 meters per hour. You can see how the water level rises and uh, you will see how it will start to fluidize. On the right side, we see the French media, right? Flo? Yes, yes. At so here 70 we, meters per well, hour, we, we, had, we didn't see anything We at had 50. to push it to huh? 70 yeah. meters yeah. to see something, yeah, to see the and, expansion. I mean, what are you seeing here? On the right side, you see incredible contamination in the media coming out, yeah. the yeah. initial backwash. You should really backwash clean. this very long yeah. before you yeah. go in the operation. Yeah. And you should backwash it at 70 yeah. meters per hour. I doubt that you find a pool where you can backwash yeah. it at 70 so, meters yeah. per hour. And the DIN is also hydrophobic, as we said. So same commissioning yeah. uh, for this one. As very the, clean. Oh, very, very clean, clean. Yeah. yeah. Produced in Switzerland or in Scotland? Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> both are the same. Yeah. Both are the same. So both companies are now really on the highest uh, standard. Yeah. So okay. this is, uh, yes. Before we are coming to this, and that's... By the way, we have a new tool that we can always bring us in, you know, that you can see us again and we can't see you, but we can, you can see us, you know, to, to have a little bit of eye contact uh, to you. Now we are coming to a very important learning and that's the main, main uh, message you should take uh, from this session. Yes. So here, what did we test here? here we are looking at a product called AFM UF. What is UF standing it, for? It stands for ultra fine. Not, not ultra filtration. Not ultra filtration. Not quite. It's almost as good. Not quite though. I so think it, it is as good. It's a, yeah. It's a very small particle size, 0 0.15 to 0.35 millimeter. And really with a fine media like this, you only need 20 meters per hour backwash velocity to expand it. Yeah. by 20 percent right yeah. so that's what you see here huh? uh 20 meter backwash velocity 20 percent of bad expansion uh with this uf so this uf we will not use in pools you know this uf is sure. something that we can produce in a very uh, limited amount it's the undersize of the grade one it's uh, ng uh, we use this after filtration to have at the top, top filtration yeah. as a, as a ultra filtration, more yeah, or less as yeah, a replacement yeah. of ultra filtration, but coming back to backwashing. So good, bad expansion. So in theory, what we told you six months ago, just watch at the bad expansion and then you're fine. This is wrong. Uh, why is it wrong? We can show you here because with the new R and D lab, we measure now the turbidity of the backwash water. Blue line is the backwash velocity, 20 meters per hour. And here you have the turbidity uh, of the backwash water. It starts low and then it goes up. Mm -hmm. And then it slowly, slowly, slowly comes down. But even after one hour, we still have some turbidity. Yeah. And that means not 100% backwash efficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and what then did what we, we have do? Done? Yeah, so we did. Uh, we pushed it to forty meters per hour. So the backwash velocity here, not to uh, twenty, but now at forty meters per hour, mm -hmm. and we see this huge uh, spike in turbidity. Right. I think now yeah. nowadays everybody understands what is a spike, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so a huge spike in turbidity, and huge then, spike, yeah. and then drop to zero. You always can have a small spike mm -hmm. in somewhere in between, but in general, you know, zero. Very quickly to zero. Yeah. 
And uh, again, what's the learning about this? I mean, the learning really is, it's not just about the expansion of the bed. It's also about having enough velocity to get the particles out. Yes. Right? And let me clarify this, you know, that expansion is important. This will release the particles from your media. Mm -hmm. It will bring the meat, uh, particles on the top of your filter bed, but you need these drag forces to wash them out. Yeah, you exactly. need these drag forces. Exactly. And maybe uh, another one that's an old slide, but very important slide. It's your favorite yeah. slide. Yeah, it is, right? Because, <laughs> we, and this is still true, truer than ever. You know, when we say fast and short backwash is much better than a slow and long, right? So for all the gentlemen on the call, that's not true in everything in life, but in backwashing, <laughs> but backwash fast and short is much is. better than slow right. and long. And, and yes, yeah, so, so just, you know, you, you remember this calculation. If you backwash at 60 meters per hour, it takes the water one minute to travel one meter. If you backwash at 30 meters per hour, it will take the water two minutes or one minute to, to travel half a meter. Right. So you need to at least to double your backwash time. And think right? about what this is. You know, this is roughly a meter, two meters. That's the speed of a snail. Mm -hmm. It's not even a fast snail. No. And this is just not enough to have these lift forces to wash them out. Yep. So I still think, you know, your general rule, if you have here two meters to pass, you know, from the nozzle plate to the, to the top, you know, it is two meters, calculate this time, plus 50%. Yeah. And uh, you can this do on a high velocity, like 60 meters, or you can do it at a low velocity, like 30 meters. If you have the choice, mm. go, go for the high. 60. Yeah. Go as high as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because you really need these lift forces to, to, to get it out. If you don't have it, you just have to, to backwash a lot longer. Yeah. So you, you will need a lot more water. So a lot of people think, well, less speed, less water, completely yeah. wrong. It's just the opposite, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. This is uh, really important to understand and uh, we can't uh, stress, stress enough, this huh? uh, yes. enough. Yeah. Anything else to add on this? Um, no, I think, uh, yeah, to summarize, you summarize. know, we can summarize uh, this, you know, also that you, you definitely need the right hardware. Uh, yes. That allows oh, yeah. you yeah. that allows you that strong backwash. Right? Okay, I yeah, this briefly, is a, this briefly, is an one, example one here, yeah, right? of the hardware. You know, yeah. great filters, uh, good, good brand, Austral. You know, that was an example that we showed you. You know, two meter filter in diameter, and you can buy these filters with 110, 125, 140, and 160 meter, and this is for 20 meters per hour of velocity. This is good for filtration. It's not good for backwashing. This is completely wrong. This should be forbidden. Dear friends from, from in Spain, take these three models out. This is wrong. This is shit. Just do this. You need this here in order to backwash the filters. Yes. Uh, all the really? rest. Is, and uh, just this week, you know, I had one, you know, if horizontal filter was the same thing, you yeah. know, and uh, the engineers, they go and say, okay, I need uh, the 20 meters per hour. And they don't think about oh, backwashing. Well, that's filtration velocity, yeah. right? That's, so, that's, yeah. This is not really well appreciated in the pool industry and not at all in water treatment, even, yeah. even less. Yeah. So please do me a favor. In Colplus, I may say so to Jan, huh? we only do this. All yeah. the rest is forbidden. Yeah. You know, uh, we, don't, we don't do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, to summarize. To maybe. summarize, yeah. So you still need this bed expansion, really minimum 15% to fluidize the bed. Also, mm -hmm. the lift force, like we just said. Absolutely. Yeah. So Even ideally 25. Ideally 25, minimum 15. Or more. You know, also, if you lose a little bit of media, uh, I mean, we are filter manufacturers. If you lose a little bit of media, we are not suffering. Believe me, we are not suffering. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know, I, uh, in, in, in whiskey, you know, if you, if you leave the whiskey in the, in the casks, you know, you also leave quantity. Yeah. And we call this the ancient share. The ancient so share. please allow this also to the filter media. Uh, some ancient share is, is well deserved and uh, it's not really a problem yes. uh, to do yeah. that. You get then to the right uh, free board. Okay. Um, Even better is a side glass, right? So side yeah, glass, the hardware yes. on the hardware, okay, you need a, a reasonable hardware, sizes, that's the filter yep. connections yep. and side glass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you think and you have the speed, but yep. 
your bed is exactly. not moving. And or, last but not or least. Or if you have laterals, you don't have an equal bad expansion. Yep. So side glass should be a must. This again to my friend in the UK, PewTech, you know, put this in the norm, side glass, and then we can stop all our discussions, you know, that will solve everything. In Switzerland, Germany, Austria, it's by law, you need a side glass. I would recommend this for each and every yep. uh, country. And third, don't fly blind. Huh? Use a speedometer, use a flow meter, a flow vis ideally, which helps you to calculate and control your velocities. Yeah. And you see, we have a big range, you know, up to 200 millimeter. Yep. We even have it digital. You can use others. I don't care, but please use mm -hmm. flow meters. If you want to use flowies, uh, we love this product. They are, they're not cheap. What's the good price? They're well priced. They're not expensive. That's what I, I was looking for and give a good, good, uh, very reliable, very yeah. easy to install, idiot proof, idiot proof. Yeah important in many industries also <laughs> in the pool industry every single pool even the private pools Easier to better, huh? you know it's a small investment less yeah. than 200 euros yeah. absolutely yeah, just yeah, do yeah. it yeah okay so what's next corrosion huh corrosion, corrosion okay lsi index uh yeah, yeah. and uh this uh, i go um yeah i go quickly bigger again we do this session about this uh, Langerier index or Langerie index, as you say it with your nice French accent, uh, because of Bo. He's not on the call, unfortunately, because we had a meeting in Cologne with him and we came to corrosion and I told him, yeah, about the LSI and said, what is the LSI? I told him, Bo, session number seven, Pool Academy. Oh, I didn't watch it. Why not? I was too busy. And that's a big mistake, you know, yeah. priority should be Pool Academy, you know, this, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yes. you know, to have yeah, the knowledge, you know, the DPA in yeah. your mind instead yeah. of, the, of the DNA in your body. Uh, yeah, and that's why we are doing it again. And he's not on the call again. So it's really a misconception, a mistake to think that chlorides are the only drivers of corrosion. Yeah, but pools, that's, huh? I told this shit yeah. for 25 yeah. years. I yeah. said, just watch on the chlorides. Uh, uh, filament. that's also imp important for you because you're a manufacturer of, of uh, uh, stainless steel products. You know, we were always told 600 milligrams is the max, you know, for, for uh, 316 stainless steel and 200 for 306. And it's true, but it's not the full truth. It's not the full truth. There are other factors which play a role. And this is what we see in, oops, I don't want to go back here. Uh, this is what we see here in the uh, Langelier index. Yeah. Before we come to that, maybe quickly, yeah. TDS so and correlation conductivity. Between TDS, yeah. conductivity, chloride. Uh, maybe we start with uh, conductivity. Uh, which is yes. measured in uh, micro siemens and and what what again is that so the, it's how the, fast your electrons are moving yeah, in, exactly. in the water so yeah. how exactly. easily they can move yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that has to do with the with the tds the total dissolved solids mm -hmm. you know these are the, the the ions that you have in the water so that's hardness so calcium magnesium it's salinity so it's the chlorines the sodium ions that you have in the, in the water the more you have in the water the easier the the electrons can travel if you have deionized water your conductivity is zero yeah. cannot travel yeah. you know mm. it's an isolator yeah. but the moment where you have this in it is so it's about this tds mm -hmm. but to go out there and to to count the tds it's quite difficult, it's difficult i guess huh? yeah so it's, it's oh, yep. Yeah. So you take your conductivity, huh? which is easy to measure. Yeah. You know, 20 meet 20 euro. Yes. Uh, you divide it by 1.6 and you get your TDS. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. TDS meter will give you, give you right away the TDS. Yeah. The value. one that we deliver with the DHN yeah. already calculates this down to, yeah. uh, to TDS. Yeah. So you can save the calculation. I'm sure you can do it, but whenever. Yeah. This is uh, yes. what it In is. simple rule, then you take your TDS value and you divide this by two to have your chloride concentration in, in yeah. ppm. More about this session number seven mm -hmm. of our pool academy, yep. where we explain this a lot more in detail. But let's come now to the Langelier index. So uh, we told it's your not just Langelier. 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 <laughs> okay. LSI. I keep it with LSI. Uh, <laughs> LSI. Thanks for correction. <laughs> I'm happy to learn, even it, in my it age. It was French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in, in French, Maybe for the French not. session, I hope I, 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 I will manage it. 
So that's an indicator, yes. uh, an index that uh, tells you how corrosive or how scaling your water is, huh? And it's based on five factors. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Before we come to that, maybe how does it work? Yeah. So you want your, your LSI index to be as close as possible to zero. You want a neutral, uh, in balance water, not mm -hmm. corrosive, not scaling. You want to be neutral. So if you go uh, with LSI negative, uh, Here. you will be corrosive. So the, the higher and negative, the higher, the more mm -hmm. corrosive you yeah. are. You also yeah. see this green is still good. Orange, yeah. you know this from traffic. More than 0.4, it's starting to, to be, uh, you have risk. You have and then really risk. if you get red, it's really stopped. Yeah. Huh? And uh, same way on the other side. So uh, when you're positive, your water is getting scaling and you can have some calcification problems. Yep. Yeah. If yeah. you go below, uh, above 0.8, you so have we always really want to stay between minus mm. 0.4 to plus 0.4. Yeah, perfect. Right here in the yeah. green zone, don't yeah. go bigger than the yeah. orange zone. Huh? And to calculate this LSI, we are taking five different values, not only one, uh, not yeah. only the salinity, yeah. but really five parameters. So this is the, the factor is this is per plus this plus this plus this minus this. So th that means. You know, this number is lower. That means more corrosive, the lower is your pH. Yeah. 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 So, Tem so the lower your pH, the more corrosion you have. The lower your the the lower your temperature, the more corrosive mm -hmm. you are. Same with hardness. Same with hardness. Yes. Huh? The lower your hardness, the more corrosive. Yeah. Huh? Can you play on the hardness? How can you change your hardness? It's a bit... Uh, it's a bit difficult, huh? Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can use softener. Yeah. So yeah. you make your, you remove your total hardness. I would really not recommend this. Yeah. I know it's done still in some countries. Don't do it. You know, it makes your water corrosive. You can also increase this by uh, adding magnesium chloride because yeah. it's the magnesium which yeah. will increase the hardness. Mm. Uh, so that's a, a plus, but I would not play with the hardness really. That's that's done. That's yeah. stable. Yeah. But what you can easily play is the alkalinity because that moves. You know, we lose alkalinity. We just discussed it this morning. You know, with your pool, you know, your alkalinity went down. Why went it down? Uh, why went it down? Because he heated up the, the, the spa on 37 degrees. This is where you lose CO2. You yeah. lose alkalinity. Yeah. And then, of course, with the blowers, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So you can very well play on the alkalinity. Yeah, quite easy to, to increase also. Huh? You yeah. increase it with what? With uh, Alka Plus. Alka Plus or bicarbonate, yeah. huh? if you don't want to work with payroll, which I could not understand. So again, you know, the lower the pH, the lower the temperature, the lower the total hardness, the lower the alkalinity, the more corrosive is the water. And the only thing which is on the other side, the higher your salinity, your TDS, we can take this as, as the same, same, uh, yeah. Uh, not formula, the same word, salinity mm. and TTS. The higher yeah, yeah. your salinity, right. the more corrosive uh -huh. it is. Yeah. So let's show them how, let's show you how to use this calculator quickly. Mm -hmm. And we do it now really from scratch. Um, so let's go on, uh, on Google. Um, it's already in. So here you type LSI calculator. The first one you will, sh we, you will see is this uh, calculator Lentec from Lentec. Yeah. Lentec is a water treatment company in Netherlands. And they have a fantastic website, really. With yeah. Thanks, Lentec, for, for doing this job. There are yeah. also some good apps, by the way. Yeah, also some good apps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here you find, again, all five parameters. Uh, very easy to use. So here, let's say we have a pH of, what? 7.4. Uh, 7.4. Conductivity. Salinity. Conductivity, you know, with tap water, usually you already have some ions, some calcium in it, it's roughly 200. So let's add one kilogram of salt. One uh, that will bring it to 1,200. You know, if you add one kilogram of salt, normal salt, you increase your TDS, your salinity, by 1,000 milligram per liter mm -hmm. or gram per cubic. Yeah. yeah. Hardness. 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 Okay, hardness. Um, a lot of people are familiar with, with French degree. Mm. Uh, say let's say 20. 20 French degree in milligram per liter you have to multiply this with right. 10, 10. Yeah. so it would be 200 yeah. so that would be 20 French degree that would be 12 German, German degree, degree. Yeah. Yeah. it's a, it's mid soft water not very soft water okay. but mid soft alkalinity. water alkalinity 
Yeah, HCO3, remember, again, uh, that was session number seven, where we talked about the alkalinity. What is alkalinity, uh, the CO3? Uh, yeah. yeah, we usually tell you always stay above this 100 ppm. So let's let's take 100. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Temperature in the water, I mean, for us now, where we worked in the production, where we became man, you know, <laughs> 10 degree would be okay, but I know not for the latest, right? They would go uh, for 32. So let, let's compromise on yeah, 28. Usually it's the 28 on the I know Jamie's wife likes 40 and, yeah. degrees. In 40? Her, in her, She's a hot woman, her. huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I, so I'm not sure if that was the right impression. Maybe not. So, so then you uh, just She likes warm temperature. <laughs> I want me, I meant. Okay, calculate. You uh, just click on calculate and you yeah. see here your index. Perfectly balanced. So huh? perfectly balanced. Really yeah. zero, zero, zero. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here, the pH above tells you that would bring your pH into balance. 7.4, we have 7.4. This is why we are in balance. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe change this once to 7. Point, no, to, 7, point, yeah, 7. To 0. 7. 0. 0. Just to see and then calculate it again. And then you see, you know, yeah. we did change anything, just the pH, and yeah. we are already corrosive. corrosive yeah. 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 And okay. Now, if you add more salt to your yeah. to your water, now maybe let's go or back let's go to seven point four, so you can always a little bit compare. Oh, seven point two. Seven. Let's yeah. do seven point okay. two. Yeah. And here we have uh, three kilo a salt system. Yeah, like three kilo. Normal, yeah. Not the HN. Let's say three kilo. Four thousand. Yeah. Uh, four thousand. Or oh, four thousand. Four yeah. kilo. Yeah, if you want to go four thousand. Okay. Doesn't matter. And we leave alkalinity the same. Yeah. Uh, so okay. you see here, Corrosive. it's not a big change. It's not a big change. Or uh, go back to 7.4 on the pH. We should go in 7.6 to be in balance. But uh, calculate again. You know, that this is how we could compare it before. With one kilogram of salt, we were in balance. Mm -hmm. Zero, just with four kilogram, we have minus 0 0.2. It's not a big deal. If we put the pH on 7.6, we are in balance. Yeah. So again, salinity is not the key driver. Yeah, pH is a more important factor already. pH and alkalinity. And yeah, with these two, you can play. So let's uh, keep or move back to this uh, yeah, 1200. So you can compare it. Huh? To just show you. And now let's say our alkalinity drops to uh, let's 20. Say let's put it 20. to 20. You know, that's, that's tough. But so, that happens. You know, so you 20. warm up and uh yeah boom and then you start minus to, point seven wow. to get minus corrosive. point seven and this alkalinity if you don't have alkalinity your ph will be very unstable your free chlorine control will not work anymore yeah, your no. your coagulation flocculation will not work it's uh it's not good yeah and let's say 7.2 with this you're really really corrosive yeah. now you're so your inox is gone. <laughs> your stainless yes, steel is gone. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So watch really on this a lot more. Right, you know, uh -huh. also for the stainless steel manufacturer, Benke, Marpichin, Pollen, uh, on Sophie is also on the call. You know, if the people are coming because of corrosion, look at this. Don't look just on the chlorides. Huh? On Sophie, you got it? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, and how, back to how often do you recommend people to? In a private pool, let's say. Test every correct. every month. Okay. Every month yeah. would be ideal. With a DHN, yeah. we recommend every month. Mm -hmm. And then the reality is they will do it every three months. <laughs> but that's better than every three yeah. years. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, these were the examples that we have seen. Yeah. Just to, to recapitulate, this was the first uh, example, 7.4, one kilogram of salt, normal hardness, normal temperature. We are in balance. Yeah. Number two, where we added one and kilogram of salt. Yeah. Not a big change yeah. in the LSI. In this case, you just put your pH to Correct. seven point five and your your back is in better yeah. shape. Yeah. yeah. Then alkalinity plays a huge role. Yes. Huh? Yeah. I mean this we, yeah. probably the most important. Yeah. Huh? And that's also easy uh, to we, manage and correct. Yeah, huh? we didn't yeah. Uh, talk about uh, temperature. Uh, oh, that's that's next. That's, that's, that's temperature also plays an important role. Yeah, huh? you, you know, uh, for example, if you winterize your pool, you know, yeah. you want to let run your pool, and you continue to 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 those pH minus, you are in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the easiest what I do, I stop. If I go in winter, I stop the heater and I stop the pH. 
uh, dosing. And then automatically it goes in balance, you know, then mm -hmm. it goes to here you have 7.8. In my case, it goes to 7.9. You're in balance. You don't have corrosion problems. Mm -hmm. By the way, it also can be, and that goes to Christy and to Jimmy, you know, in the UK, let's make this big. That goes to Jimmy and to, to Christy in the UK. Sometimes, you know, in Scotland, you have very soft water. So there you really have to add uh, uh, alkalinity and uh, you have to put up quite a high uh, pH as a set point. Mm. Uh, but in, in, in the South, sometimes you have very hard water, unbelievable hard water. And, uh, or also in Veldana where they have calcification problems. Yeah. Check the uh, LSI and you will find, okay, my, my balance pH is maybe seven. I would never go below seven. Yeah. And don't forget, you know, if you are not sure, prefer to go a little bit higher in pH. You know, guys, mm. why this is? Because the, the pH probe measures the pH, you know, it always takes the electrons in and by this it's getting older and the, the, the pH ah. uh, comes down. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, this is why you have to recalibrate it uh, yeah. from time to time. This is why we are students until we retire here. Yes, yes. Well, that's uh, in 100 <laughs> years. On. In 100 years, you have, you have reached yeah. my level. Yeah. <laughs> and they <boost>. <laughs> <laughs> We are still friends, okay. by the way. Oh, <laughs> more than ever. Uh, okay. More than ever. Are we in time? Yeah, yeah we need yeah, yeah, to we hurry okay. up a little bit. Huh? So now so we, come, baby. To, we baby. come to the advanced, ox advanced oxidation. That's what it stands for. Yeah. And uh, briefly, you know, what do you do? You know, you have a very high uh, UV uh, dose, you know, 5,000 joule per square meter. It's 15 times higher than they use to disinfect uh, drinking water. Why? We don't, we don't want to disinfect the water with advanox, with advanced oxidation. UV aeration is not used to disinfect the water. It's to generate free radicals. Yeah. Philip, maybe you explain this? Yeah, so when we break up the, uh, the uh, H2O2, the peroxide, with the photons. Uh, exactly, with the photons, we break them apart and we generate these OH radicals, uh, these hydroxyl radicals. As we know, they have a very high oxidation potential. Uh, so they will then break down contaminants and other substances in the water, for example, combined chlorine. Uh, yeah, and it's a complete oxidation. Even, a, even, even pharmaceuticals yeah. and very toxic mm. uh, chemicals. Yeah. You know, and that's what you see in water treatment. You know, this technology, advanced oxidation, is now known for about 20 years and more and more used in the last 10 years. It, in water treatment, it pre re replaces very, very rapidly uh, ozone system yep. because it has, it's, it's higher oxidative and it's very short-lived. So you mm -hmm. don't have to remove the ozone yep. out, etc. Yep. And this is what we bring now in the pool industry. It's that simple. Yeah. So we use it here uh, for indoor pools, public indoor pools, to remove this combined chlorine. Yeah, Bilet that's our test pool, Breitenbach, where we live. This is, uh, pool is 60 years, even older. It's even older than me. It's even older than Philip, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're only one year apart, so uh, it's yeah. not so bad. And, uh, but you see the water is crystal clear. And we have a DAISY system, all good. And you all know, you know, with, with a DAISY system, uh indoor because you don't have the uv in it can be that your combined chlorine goes up 2.3.4 yeah never a problem in indoor in outdoor pools yeah. but in indoor pools it can be yeah. and you have three solutions you can have small layer of carbon you can have uv medium pressure which will bring combined chlorine down but goes thms yeah. up you can All have this ozone you can no, have ozone, ozone, which is expensive, huh? which is really expensive. Also yeah. has some disadvantages. We believe this solution is as good as ozone, but much cheaper and yeah. much easier, much safer. Because uh, these organic chloramines build up slowly in the pool. So you only need to treat a small amount of water. So you take your complete total pool volume, you divide by 60 hours, uh, more or less two to three days. And, and you're good. You uh, would be good with your combined chlorine. So you have here 180 cubic meter and you go in this bypass only with three every 60 hours, as you said. All we explained in detail in session number eight. Uh, this difference is yep. where we take more yes. time. Yeah. But why we bring this again for two reasons. First, we want to show you, you know, we have now more experience, especially in our test pool. And you see, you know, we were always, you know, over these weeks, we were always below 0.2, average 0.1. And here it went off. 
Yeah, so went back to after 18 months of operation, we the lamp went off. So it's yeah. true, you will have to replace the lamp after 18 months, more or less. That's the lifetime of the lamp. Yes, it's so, about uh, 12,000 hours, right? Yeah. And you see then it goes on, off, and then if you restart it again, it goes down Back again. to the point one, yeah. Proofs that that works, because we don't have so many installations out there because of the pandemic. We sold some, but mo most of them were not installed, so we used this mm -hmm. example yep. again. And, you know, with the experience we, had, we, we did now after 18 months, we more and more believe this is a good I wouldn't call it a game changer, but it's something new. You know, if you want to be on the pioneer side, this is where you you, yeah, you, you should exactly. go for. And we have something new. We like new technology. Yes, yeah, so we have a new Advenox 80, AOP 80, which is a smaller unit that we will use for uh, pools up to 80 cubic meters. And uh, we think it's the very best solution, not only for these pools, but for public spas and hotels. And there are a lot. Uh, think about, mm -hmm. you know, oh, Germany, Switzerland, yeah. Italy, Sudtirol, uh, Spain, a, a lot. There are a lot. And especially for spas, because the spa is only 2,000 liters of water, 2 mm -hmm. cubic meters of water, but the circulation is 20, 40. And then you so, just bypass one cubic meter through the yeah, air. Yeah, you can go faster in this case. You can go faster, yeah, yeah but yeah. It, will be, it will be perfect. We really believe, and what we have seen is the perfect, solution yeah so yeah. this is that for we have this aop 80 huh? yeah. and then you mentioned here private pools yeah private pools so here we uh we have many pools uh, in switzerland but not only in germany in uh, europe running with peroxide Even in the uk what i learned for yesterday so the, all yeah. these barosoft pools uh, yeah. with peroxide you don't need to do any uh, second injection of peroxide you just use uh, one injection of peroxide mm -hmm. and yeah. it's really getting you uh with this free radicals yeah. uh, formation, a booster. Yeah, mm. because you all know, you know, with Pyrosoft, you know, with a DAISY system, it works okay, usually well, but it still builds up a little bit more and more organic because the Pyrosoft is not that strong mm -hmm. as chlorine. And then you have a buildup of organics that you can measure mm -hmm. in KMN04. So it would be great, you know, to form some of this peroxide into free radicals to booster this. Mm -hmm. So here you don't have to have a second pump. Mm. You have already the peroxide 10, 50 ppm in your pool that will come here. You also don't need a bypass pump. You just make here a valve in and pass roughly one cubic meters of water through it yeah. or two cubic meters of water that will booster your Pyrosoft installation. So it's good news for everybody. And usually and these people who have these Pyrosoft pools, uh, they, they, are, they are not the poorest, right? Yeah, they can yeah, afford it. Yeah. And it's even not... Uh, but it's not so expensive. Yeah. Huh? So it's I smaller. Mean, you can is, or, uh, yeah. install yeah. it horizontally, vertically, uh, low consumption and lower price. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, all of them are well-priced, but uh, yeah, there's a big gap between AOP 80 and 150, 2,000 euro difference. And you have this unit for 4,500 list price. Mm. So very attractive product. Yeah. You know, these ones, the big ones here, these are monsters. They are nearly two meters long. Yeah. And they're 30, you, 40 kilos. They are heavy. Mm. Yeah. So how, how much is only the control box here? This is eight kilos. Eight just kilos. for the control box. And so you get a lot. The new one will be great. <laughs> um, touch screen with the buttons, with the connectivity. It's going to be a great control unit. And you can put it directly on the unit. So here you yeah. get a lot of, a lot of. Yeah. Value, yeah. at least weight. The weight value, yeah. <laughs> and you can install it vertically too. Right? Vertically, yeah. so for the yeah. small technical yeah. rooms, it's yeah. lighter. Exactly. Uh, yeah, less consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. Lower price. So I, I feel you're very excited about this. <laughs> yes. Yeah? And uh, we have them here in stock and we want to, 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 to bring this. Why do we want to this? Uh, also, you know, because we in Dryden, we, 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 we we, we believe we are a little pioneers in this water treatment, that we bring the new trends that we learned from water treatment. This is what we have done with AFM, with the CPMs, etc. what we want to bring to the pool industry. And if you want to participate in this pioneer group, join us. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Good. experience so from around the world. What do we have to we show? Have to Let's oh, yeah. take... Uh, Shit, yeah. yeah. We're okay. So first example is from uh, South Africa. This was from our... Uh, Friend Mike Demain. He's a South for us. African import. Yeah, exactly. He started the year in South Africa yeah. and now we moved him here. But before he came, he had to do different jobs. Yeah, exactly. So so one of them was this. This is the oldest pool 
in uh, South Africa, I learned. Terrible water clarity, you see this on the left side. Had a very high chlorine demand, uh, you know, incorrect pipe sizes, a lot of problems. Um, what changed, the only change that was made was that the sand was exchanged with AFM. And as a result of that, chlorine demand was reduced dramatically uh, by up to 80%. Look at the water clarity on the right side. Do you see a difference? Uh, I, I do. think we do. Would you swim? You this? know, and I like the last point, you know, this, the underwater hockey team. I have no idea what this is, but I believe you don't want to do this in the left pool. Yeah, probably <laughs> not. Probably uh, not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's another one he did. Uh, that was an outdoor pool. Uh, to be honest, uh, we don't have the, 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 the photos from before, but uh, they look terrible. What uh, Mike told me, they had actually a turnover time of 16 hours. <laughs> I mean, I was shocked, you know, in the UK, uh, in, in the USA, to see uh, eight, eight hours, hours. And six hours. Yeah. And that was 16 hours. Yeah. So here, uh, he also corrected the pipe sizing, new pipes, new pumps, same filters, and of course, AFM and you see, you know, the, the change they, they, so they, we did. six hours, six hours, six hours, yeah. six hours, but if same mm -hmm. filter, you know, the no. filters were before, I don't know, at, uh, at 10 meters or, or even lower. Now they're at 25 meters, mm -hmm. uh, but you see what difference it does and mm -hmm. high, high reduction in the chlorine demand again. And what are these uh, savings on the uh, fresh water? Uh, oh yeah, that's quite a funny <laughs> one. I also asked him, what, why saving some fresh water at Chow? He said, the people were smelling so heavily of chlorine that they were showering so long to get rid of the uh, uh, chlorine uh, smell. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, and you say what you want. Here's a wonderful example from our friends DSL in China. They, so, have, they Cindy, had a situation. Welcome. Yes, yeah. so it was a... That came from you. Yeah, you beautiful. See, whatever you sent us, we'll come back. We use it. We use it <laughs> when we can, right? So... Beautiful daisy pool using APF. Um, and the, AFM. Yeah, and AFM, of course. Uh, the water hardness was extremely low, right? Yeah, but yeah. So uh, the problem was that, uh, you know, flocks were starting to form as they entered the pool. Um, and we were always under the assumption they would, it would work properly. But when we saw this, we had to look at it and we found out that it had to do with the water hardness, right? So when the, when the APF reacted with the calcium hypochlorite, then they formed flocks, right? Yeah. To make this clear, you know, the pool, they dosed AFM, they had AFM, they dosed APF. Yeah. The water was relatively, it was clear. But when they added uh, calcium hypochlorite, yeah. suddenly you got these clouds, you yeah. know, out from the, the inlets. Mm -hmm. And the question was, what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened? It happened that you see now coagulation flocculation yeah, takes exactly. place at this very low hardness there was no coagulation flocculation and when you added the cal hypo you added uh, hardness Calcium. and then you had yeah. seen the re effect yeah so the takeaway here coagulation and flocculation it's same with, with the lsi mm. needs needs some hardness needs some alkalinity otherwise it will not work now this pool will become cloudy for a day and over time it will become clear again because it will be re removed yep. by fm yep. maybe you have to do a backwash a little bit sooner i was not traveling a lot this year but so i stayed a little bit in switzerland <laughs> this is from uh, my friends uh, in uh, in the volleys you know he sent me this picture and said suddenly i get a little bit this green water i said what's your problem i think it looks nice <laughs> and then uh, a few weeks later he said but now it looks like this you know here <laughs> It looks a little bit like the PP people would, mm. well, whatever, yeah. do. Uh, it's not what, what we want. And I told him uh, that must be iron. No, it's impossible. We measured it. But if you measure iron in the water, it's dissolved iron. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, Suspen oxidized, mm -hmm. suspended mm -hmm. uh, iron. And I asked him, do you have a flow? He no, I don't. Ah, you should. But are you sure you have correct backwash velocities, etc.? Yeah, I'm sure we, we have. And it's really, it's a great company. I, I very much appreciate uh, him, especially uh, him as a person. You know, we have good filters, uh, Cold Plus 1.2. It's good installation, but it's an old installation. They have two uh, sterile pumps, bronze pumps, which are great. In theory, they give 20 cubic meters uh, per hour per pump, but not with this pipework. You know, there is too small pipework and then a lot of elbows and T's and and uh, non-return valves and all mm. these 
they don't give it. Because when we were backwashing, and this is why you have a side glass, nothing moved in the filter bed, nothing moved. And we have found out with the balance tank that actually our backwash velocity was 20 meters per hour. And we also uh, only backwash, he only could backwash for a minute or maybe 1.5 minute because the balance tank is only 2000 liter. And you know, you can't, you can't take it all off the balance tank. Usually mm. it's around yeah. 60%. So you were only able to backwash it for, for one minute. Uh, by the way, you see how brown it is here, this balance tank? This is the iron. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you come and you see a brown balance tank, you know they have an iron problem. Mm -hmm. That's another learning. That's a very mm, fresh you. for you. Uh, <laughs> so what we did, um, of course, they had to replace the pumps. They have now a bigger pump and they take the water directly from the pool. So we abused the, the suction point from this fluo counter jet where we taken out the water for backwashing, you know, with three-way Vesco mounts directly from the pool. So we can backwash 50 meters per hour at the filtration, uh, as a backwash velocity, and we can backwash for three, five, six minutes. We also replaced the media. I'm sure we could have recovered it, you know, with mm -hmm. many, many backwashes, but he didn't have AFMNG yet in. So we got new media <laughs> yep. in, you yep. know, and, and it was not the first, it worked good for two, three years because he got the iron on the AFM more and more. It was more and more saturated until it came through and then ended up with this water. Now it's clear. It's perfect. Problem solved. So again, it's about backwash. Yeah. Again, me, sorry, Davos, Switzerland. Davos, this is where uh, the WEF is. Um, that's coming from my friend Christian. And uh, this is a hotel pool, which is, he told me in the season, you know, in winter, you, you even don't see the water. It's really very, very loaded. And he did now something different. He does not have uh, uh, Advanox in. It's an old installation. He has two, two uh, filters with BESCO, with AFM. These are the, the main filters, but he has a bypass filter. And in this bypass filter, you have uh, 30 uh, centimeters of uh, AFM and 60 centimeters of, of carbon. And he just make a bypass. This bypass filtration we know for many years that works really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I was always told you have to, to, to do this bypass filtration with roughly 50% uh, of the mainstream. Yeah. And uh, he told me, listen, this is not true. If you have AFM, if you have a DAISY, you can do it with 10 to 20. He told me five to 10. I wanted to be a little bit on the safe mm -hmm. side and mm -hmm. put in here 10 to 20. Just to share this with you. You know, if you say, I don't want Advanox, I don't want uh, uh, to have a layer of, of carbon on it because it could be, uh, you could have a breakthrough. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. This is, mm -hmm. by the way, also where you also can use a multiple valve because this water is already very good filtered, so the contamination risk is less, and you have to backwash this maybe to backwash and rinse. This is why I would go, would go here for a manual multiport valve, maybe every six weeks. Okay, that was a very long good. one. Sorry. Okay, good. The next one is from a different world. It's the same country, the different world. It's the water treatment world. This is a project that we have been able to. Uh, to realize here in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. This is uh, municipal drinking water pulled from the lake of Zurich. Um, we, what we see here are rap rapid gravity filters, RGF. You see on the left side how they looked before. Um, so these were sand, and, sand anthracite. and anthracite, exactly. These were the filters that you're pointing at, the filters that we changed in phase one. Yeah. Huh? And, and these one. Is exactly. Or stayed with sand. Exactly. As a comparison. Huh? And then you see on the right side uh, how it was done. I think this, we might skip this. No, video. no, we do it. Yeah. Okay. We quickly do it because uh, we were always also asked, you know, if you have big quantities, you know, this was 150 tons of sand. How you do this yeah. in big volume, you know, with this? How you call these these trucks? Silo silo trucks. Silo yeah. trucks. You know, this silo trucks comes here is to our factory, but it can be somewhere in Italy or in, in the UK. Then you take the big bags. Yeah, you load the silos. A 
So there are two different seven. components. One for each grade, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. Two or exactly. three. Yeah, two, two or three. three. Yeah. Usually they can take 20. Some of them can take 24 tons. Then you blow it in together, air together with water. Yeah. This is how you blow it in, you know. So, of course, gravity filters are great, you know. Absolutely. Feel. The, in the real filters, you have that way you have no dust yeah. uh, when you blow it in wet. And here you right. see it now in filtration. This is how a gravity, you know, just the water pressure from the gravity uh, makes the filtration. Here comes a little bit of promotion, propaganda. <laughs> you know, our activated uh, thing, self sterilizing. Bah, 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 bam. But we keep on going. Here is the backwash. Mm -hmm. So they are absolutely perfect in backwash. Yeah. So we skip the rest, you know, uh, the takeaway from this was, uh, you know, you had the raw water turbidity of 0.5. After sand, we have 0.7. After AFM, we have less than 0.1. No. And six meters per hour filtration velocity, you can't get it higher, you know, with the gravity right. backwash 25, 25 meters. Yeah. Uh, so improved particle removal, shorter backwash time. Before they were backwashing once per week for 20 minutes. Now we do two times 3.5 minutes and uh, a highly reduced uh, operation Perfect. expenses yeah. because you don't have this air wash. Yep. These were big, big, big blowers. Mm -hmm. And the people were so happy, they just placed a new order of 300 tons. You know, and in a way, I wanted to show you this. I'm also really proud on this uh, project because we do not have in Switzerland the regulation for drinking water. And mm -hmm. these guys were so in love with our product, what they have seen, uh, uh, they have seen our uh, factory on YouTube and said, we want this. And of course, the health authority came and said, you can't do it. There is no regulation, blah, blah. And say, we don't give a shit. We want it. And of course, the, the health ministry really monitored this, this water treatment every day every hour, every minute, and the results were perfect. So it will be also very easy to pass for us the next yep. uh, step. Yep. So um, summary, if we can use this in drinking water, maybe Germany and Austria should think about if you could not use it in, in your Private, public, uh, public pools. pools. Yeah. yeah, you would think, yeah. I think this one we, we, we skip. This yeah. is a great one. This is a fantastic one, but I think this is not really on on, on yeah. pools, uh, but here we did a great job. Not we, Mike Domain did our yeah. South African import. You know, we we saved the life of many fish and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and nature in the harbor of of Cape Town. But this one is one we skip. And you can find the story on our YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Great to our YouTube channel. Yes. The last thing we wanted to show you is how to rewatch all the pool uh, academy sessions. Because we channel. believe this is, has a really good value. Um, we believe because we believe we are good. Maybe you're not. Doesn't matter. Um, it's, you know, you can use this, this uh, pool academy really to educate your people, you know, your employees. Don't take the freshies, you know, the newies you are in for a week. They, you will kill them. You know, a little bit the experienced people and uh, tell them, you know, maybe in wintertime you have a little bit of time, you know, that uh, they can watch it. Not in one day, all the 10 sessions, you will kill them, make every uh, one day, one session. And uh, yeah. So this is how you find us. Uh, Dryden Aqua Pools, you see here, because we have three different channels now, one for water treatment, one for aquaria. And of course, the one you will be using is the, the pools. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on this red button here. Yeah, we are not yet on 1,000. We want to get to 1,000. Yeah. So then you, you're... You arrive on this home page, so we have these different prices, but we're limited in the number of videos we can put uh, on this. So many people told me I cannot find the session seven, session eight. Where are they? Send me the link. So just to show you again, when you scroll down this home page, you have all the Pool Academy sessions here. First one in English, um, and here you see only six sessions, right? So the, the, the only way to, to access all of them is either you click on the main title here or you just press on this small arrow here mm -hmm. and then you will see all the sessions. But people don't, didn't find it for some reason sometimes. So you click on it, you have all the sessions here displayed. You can even uh, copy paste the link here, uh, share it with your customers and uh, they, they go directly on this page. We use the pool academy on a daily basis. You know, when we get questions, as I just sent the link and said, watch it for a minute. 40. If they see I have to watch 60 minutes, they will not do it. Yeah. Oh, very easy. Yeah.
Okay, I think we are done. So yeah. questions, questions. We have 38 participants. In the good old times, we had up to 200, right? Yeah. Uh, is there any Q&A? Well, there's no Q&A. Not everyone wants a booster. Huh? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Uh, however, I really enjoyed it uh, to have another uh, session with you. Uh, if we find something new, it will we will make another booster. It will be not on a on a monthly basis. It will not be on a quarterly basis. Yeah. But maybe once no. a year. Yes, absolutely. We come back. We will announce it, and uh, we are very happy that you joined. You can send us your experiences also. If we, uh, I mean, we learn from you uh, most of all, and uh, absolutely. If you share with absolutely. us, we will uh, share them again. Yeah. Yeah. On our full it, it was great to have you again. Again, we, we missed you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. So <laughs> thanks for joining. Huh? Yeah. And finally, what is coming now? What is coming now? Christmas. Holidays. Happy Christmas. New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All the best for next year. Take care. We see you next year. Okay. <laughs>